in today's lecture we will talk about the uv visible spectroscopy and uh, the points that we will uh, discuss in our this lecture are the introduction of the spectroscopy the definition of the uv visible spectroscopy the principle instrumentation working the graphical representation Bill's lambert law and the transitions so let's start from the very first point that is spectroscopy what is spectroscopy it is actually the interaction of the electromagnetic radiations with the matter when electromagnetic radiations interact with the matter this is called as spectroscopy and this interaction is of different types this matter may absorb these radiation may emit or may do anything with this radiation in short emr when interacts with the matter is called spectroscopy now the point is what is uv visible spectroscopy and the answer is very simple if we use a particular range of emr like uh, if we use uv visible then this spectroscopy will be named as uv visible spectroscopy why because we are using a specific range of emr we are using the uv visible range that's why then this will be given the name as uv visible spectroscopy very simple and the next point is principle what is the principle of uv visible spectroscopy regarding students point of view it is a very confusing point you must not confuse yourselves just remember one this important point but whatever is happening with your sample in the particular spectroscopy that happening is actually going to tell you people about the principle so in our this spectroscopy now we will discuss in our this instrumentation in working our sample is actually absorbing our sample is absorbing actually a kind of electromagnetic radiation that's why the principle will be absorption now you got the concept that, that what happens with your sample in the spectroscopy that will be your principle so now here our sample is absorbing so it will become absorption so in our in other spectroscopies some other functions might happen with your sample then those functions will be actually counted in the principle so now here in our this spectroscopy what is happening with our sample our sample is absorbing the electromagnetic radiations so due to which this absorption is becoming the principle of our this spectroscopy i think it is super easy and clear now the next point is instrumentation and after that we will discuss the working in the instruments we have lamp slit one monochromator slit two chopper cuvet one cuvet two you can pronounce it anyway cuvet or cuvet detector readout device then we will get the result so now uh, let's study how this instrumentation works working from the lamp will direct the electromagnetic radiations and this slit is actually uh, helping us to adjust this emr and here we have the monochromator prism we are using here and we do have some other monochromators like diffraction grating and etc so here the monochromator that which we are using is the prism this prism is actually helping in uh, separating the chromes the colors and here we have the uv visible range so you know in the visible range what we have colors we have violet indigo blue orange red etc now these all are actually packed monochromator will help in separating each so this prism is actually giving us monochromes now these packed are actually separated into one one single single colors that's why it is called as monochromator well so then after here we have the slit this slit is further helping us to adjust this radiation then the adjusted radiation will be targeted toward the chopper this chopper will break will split this radiation into two like this we'll get the two beams of the light and this will come towards this cuvette which is actually free having just buffer solution and here we have the cuvette having the sample and the radiations passing from this cuvette will not be changed and will be directed towards the detector and from this side from this beam side and this intensity radiation when it is passing from this cuvette in which the sample is available this sample is actually going to absorb these radiations and the remaining radiation will be transmitted so transmittance will be seen here then this transmitted radiation will be forwarded towards the detector it will detect and then the readout device will record and then we will take the recording we will interpret the recording after interpretation we will be able to find the concentration and the absorbance of the particular sample now the question must rise and this is rising okay the question is that from here we are getting the transmittance now how we are actually getting the absorbance how this absorbance reading is obtained this is obtained after the mathematical calculation and i will make you people understand about this mathematical understandings a moment later before that i would love to tell you people what is happening here when the light is going to pass through the sample 
when its light hits the sample it is actually absorbed by the sample after the absorption excitation will occur of the electrons and uh, actually there will be four types of excitations or you can say transitions of the electrons the reason is that we have two bonds and uh, three regions according to molecular orbital theory now what are those three regions here we have the very first one that is uh, bonding molecular orbital and here we have the non-bonding b and n and here we have the anti-bonding molecular orbital these are the orbitals okay so transitions will be seen from the bonding and non-bonding so in the bonding we have two types of bonds the bonds are either a sigma bond or pi bond so the first transition will be from sigma to sigma star this portion has a sigma star and pi star regions okay so the first transition is from the sigma to sigma star here is sigma star and the second transition will be from pi to pi star and the third transition will be from this uh, non-bonding molecular orbital to sigma star and the fourth one will be from the n to pi star sigma to sigma star pi to pi star n to sigma star n to pi star got so actually we have four types of transitions and a very simple question asked time and again that uh, which transition will require high energy so this you can guess from the distances okay so you can compare the distances from sigma to sigma star from pi to pi star from n to sigma star n to pi star you can guess yourselves very simple from sigma to sigma star we have the bigger distance the bigger path due to which it will require much energy the second is uh, the pi to pi star third is from n to sigma star and then the fourth one is from n to pi star so this is actually the transition and the energy concept now let's come towards the question that how from this reading we are actually getting the absorbance though the signal is of transmittance and i told you the answer is mathematical interpretation of this graphical representation coming to the point first of all i will make you people understand about this graph that is about transmittance so in the transmittance what we have transmitted light from the concentration so this graphical representation is telling us that if we increase the concentration transmittance will decrease transmittance will decrease so you can get such very easy so here if we have high concentration of the sample then it will absorb much of this radiation and will transmit less and vice versa means if the concentration is less here then the radiation will be absorbed less because the concentration of sample is less and this sample is responsible actually to absorb so like this uh, we got the concept if the concentration is increased the transmittance will be decreased so this is the first graph now from this value or from this graphical representation we can actually get the second graph or the second need that is how to find the absorbance now from this values if we put mathematical terms that is the negative log of transmittance if we take the negative log of transmittance we will actually get the absorbance you can write this uh, a negative log is like this a is equal to negative log i upon i naught this is i is the transmittance and i naught is actually the incident light the incident radiation so from this interpretation we can get the absorbance reading okay so uh, how will be the graphical then graphical representation uh, here we have the absorbance on the y-axis and on the x-axis we have the concentration i told you guys that we actually got the negative log you can say the reciprocal of transmittance this is actually called as the absorbance reciprocal of the transmittance is absorbance or you can say the negative log of the transmittance will give us the absorbance so now what do we get from this graphical representation absorbance is on y and on x axis we have the concentration now in this uh, graphical representation we are observing the straight line the reason behind is if you increase the concentration the absorbance is actually increased and it is obvious here if we have high concentration of the sample here then this intensity light will be absorbed more as compared to the less concentration so higher concentration is actually responsible for the higher absorption and here it is actually telling us about this if we increase the concentration absorbance will be increased and according, this is actually according to the law that is the Beer's Lambert law. Now, Beer's Lambert law actually stated that absorbance is directly proportional to the path length and concentration. B stands for the path length, C for the concentration. Means absorption will be more if the path length is more and if the concentration is more. Means that absorption will be more if the path length is large and the concentration is high. So, now what is the path length and concentration? In this cuvette or cuvette, we have the sample and the portion covered by this sample uh, in the cuvette is actually called as the path length 
and this particular region is actually the path through which this uh, actually the incident radiations are supposed to pass this is actually the path length and this path length term can also be put for the length of the cuvette so in short the cuvette is actually telling us the path length and the sample available in the cuvette is actually the concentration so these both terms are actually contributing in the absorption so absorption will be high if the path length and the concentration is high and according to mathematical terminologies if we are removing this uh, proportional sign, we have we are supposed to put the equal to sign plus another symbol specific for a specific equation. So for this equation, we are using eta symbol known as epsilon, and this tells us the molar absorptivity of the particular specimen or the sample, and it has a particular value. So a is equal to absorption is equal to the molar absorptivity and uh, the path length plus the concentration means these all actually count in the absorption this is the very point of the bees and lambert law sometimes this bees and lambert law is actually deviated now how the deviation is observed deviation might be forward backward upward downward now what is the reason behind these deviation very simple we have uh, three important things oxochrome chromophore and substituent if we add the substituent this substituent might decrease or might increase the wavelength or it might uh, upshift or downshift the wavelength so now if we add the substituent if it is shifting upward then we are actually using the term hyperchromic shift and if it is shifting downward we call it as hypochromic shift and uh, if it is shifting backward we are using the term hypsochromic shift and this is also known as blue shift and if it is shifting forward means it is increasing the wavelength we are using the term bathochromic shift Noun is a redshift, also known as redshift. Okay, so now this bathochromic shift it is actually because of one other cause that is uh, the chromophore when it is attached with oxochrome. Now, oxochrome chromophore these actually are these are actually the atoms, the group of atoms in combination. So, these are actually responsible for increasing the wavelength. So, lambda max is changed according to the oxochrome chromophore and substituent. So, this is how our Bees and Lambert's law is deviated and the terms used for the deviation of the Bees and Lambert law.